During the turn of the 20th century, the African American Civil Rights Movement encompasses social actions whose set goals were to stop entirely racial segregation and discrimination against black Americans, and to ensure legal recognition and federal protection of each citizen, no matter the color of their skin, natural rights in the Constitution, and federal law. The abolishment of slavery in 1875 was only the beginning of a new age in the United States that promised to test every African American in their will for equality. Although it was an enormous step towards the racial equality they were striving for, there were still many steps to be taken to reach this goal. In 1901, in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, Roy Wilkins was born just 36 years after slavery was abolished. By the time he started his early career at the age of 25 as a writer, editor, and activist, the civil rights movements were already well underway. January 19th is a day of the year dedicated to commemorating Martin Luther King Jr. There are two national holidays dedicated to Rosa Parks, but there are no days dedicated to commemorating Roy Wilkins. After co-founding the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, providing support to civil rights activists, and editing the Kansas City Call, Crisis, and the St. Paul Appeal, Wilkins deserves a holiday in his name and his legacy should be taught in elementary school. There is no denying that the actions of Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks were impactful and inspirational. King is most commonly known as the pastor who gave the speech entitled, I Have a Dream, one of the most influential speeches in all of American history. Nearly 190,000 African Americans took part in the March on Washington that day in 1965 where he gave his speech. However, as impactful as his dream speech has become since then, at the time it had only aired once on television and most African Americans did not have ready access to television. Besides his appearance on television, Martin Luther King Jr. received an audience of around 250,000 people. 60,000 of whom were white. By contrast, Roy Wilkins' work was more widespread throughout the country than Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches. Roy Wilkins edited The Crisis, which in 1935 reached a rapidly increasing number of 250,000 regular readers of the NAACP's magazine. Only one year after Wilkins replaced W.E.B. Du Bois as editor of The Crisis, the monthly newspaper of the NAACP, Wilkins almost tripled the average amount of copies printed in 1918, with 250,000 sold copies each month. As powerful as King's speech was, it was not as extensive as Wilkins' work. Rosa Parks has a public holiday commemorating her birth on February 4th and a public holiday commemorating her arrest on December 1st. Wilkins was also arrested on June 1st, 1963. They both were arrested for the same thing, public defiance and protesting. Yet Parks became a civil rights activation symbol after December 1st. Wilkins was arrested for continual protest and persistent marching in Jackson, Mississippi. On the other hand, Parks was arrested for not getting out of a bus seat. Even without Wilkins getting arrested, he has still achieved more greatness through his writings than one could ever achieve by defiance and law breaking. Wilkins' writing influenced the African Americans, and he negotiated with congressmen to get civil rights bills passed, which brings the African American society significantly closer to equality. Some may argue that Roy Wilkins did not deserve as much appreciation as Martin Luther King Jr. or Rosa Parks because Wilkins did not do anything that was as sweeping as King's I Have a Dream speech or Parks boycott. Wilkins did not do anything extreme enough to remember. Those who argue this point are incorrect because Wilkins, without having one radical act that would have gotten him famous, provided the stability and consistency that the movement needed. He provided the leadership by increasing the number of monthly readers of the crisis drastically, and meeting with the most U.S. congressmen and presidents of any activist. This type of efficiency shown by Wilkins and the NAACP is what will get the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission passed. Wilkins was born in 1901. King was born in 1929. So when King was growing up, Wilkins had already started his early career and by the time King was five, Wilkins had become the editor of the NAACP's magazine, The Crisis. King for the most part grew up with two inspirations, his father and Wilkins. Wilkins had already started to impact the newly founded NAACP and significantly contribute to the civil rights movement. Without Wilkins, most of King's achievements would have been impossible. Wilkins set up the March on Washington by persuading Congress and John F. Kennedy, the president during the time. Also, even though Wilkins didn't speak at Washington, he still marched and helped organize the march. He especially helped with the transportation, and if there was no transportation, then there would be little to no crowd to listen to King's speech. In conclusion, Wilkins did not get the credit he deserved for the countless contributions he had in the leading the civil rights movements from 1920 to 1960. He is truly an American hero and his legacy should last forever.